Good morning, friends in Christ. We're glad that you're joining us on this beautiful Thursday morning in central Wisconsin as we have the opportunity to gather together using technology to grow together in the Word of God. And so we're thankful that you're joining us on this beautiful Thursday morning. We want you to go ahead and take out your Bibles and open up to Joshua chapter 11. Joshua chapter 11. And as you get to Joshua chapter 11, you also can say a hello or a shout out to everyone who is joining us here at uh, Facebook Live. And later this will be posted to YouTube. And so we're glad that you're joining us to spend time investing in your relationship with the Lord by spending quality time with Him in the Word of God. And so we're in Joshua chapter 11 this morning. Picking up where we left off, it was in Joshua 10 at the end. Joshua was leading the children of Israel on the conquest of the southern part of Canaan. And today in Joshua 11, we're going to see the conquest continues now to the northern part of Canaan. Canaan, the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey. And when we look at the conquest of God giving this gift of land to the nation of Israel, the promised land, we always have to be reminded of Joshua chapter 1 where God gives them the game plan for success. Be strong and courageous. Be faithful to the Word of God. Do not go to the left or the right of it, and you will be successful wherever you go. So remember the game plan, first of all, is to be strong and courageous. Be faithful to the Lord and follow His Word and follow His commands, knowing that He's going to give the victory and that He's going to be with them wherever they go. And then we also have to remember Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, when we look at conquest, because there God laid out the battle plans for the nation of Israel, that when they come into these foreign nations, they are to destroy and annihilate. Why? So that they are not influenced by those other cultures and those foreign nations who are worshiping false idols. And have a total different philosophy on life and in their worship of these false gods and idols to where they have been led astray. And God is building this nation of Israel to be holy, to be set apart, and to be different than the rest of the nations of the world. And so it's important that we remember those commands of Joshua chapter 1 and also Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 1 through 5. All right, let's dig in this morning, Joshua chapter 11. We have some tough names at the beginning, and if you ever use the Version Bible app, you can put it on the um, option to where they will read the Bible aloud to you. And so sometimes you can follow along while it's being read aloud to you. And so when you get the tough names, you can always go with what uh, name and how they are saying and pronouncing it. Or you can read through the names fast, like you know exactly like it is. But uh, so some tough names when we start. Joshua chapter 11. When Jabin, king of Hazar, heard of this, he sent to Joab, Jobab, king of Madon, and to the king of Shimron, and to the king of Axphas, and to the kings who were in the northern hill country, and in the Arabah, south of Shinnereth, and in the lowland, and in Naphthodor, on the west, to the Canaanites in the east and the west, the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Jebusites in the hill country, and the Hivites under Hermon in the land of Mitzpah. And so the word is out that Joshua and the army of Israel is on the move, and that God has given them victories and successes. And these foreign nations know that the nation of Israel is coming to attack and to attack, take their land. And they know the history of the God of Israel and the power that he brings. And so now they are arming together and forming these alliances to try to stop the conquest and the nation of Israel from taking over their land that has been promised to them by Yahweh. And so they're fighting for their home countries, they're fighting for their land, and they have these alliances. And these alliances are growing large. 
we see how large they are in verse 4. Look what it says. It says, And they came out with all their troops, a great horde in number, like the sand that is on the seashore, with very many horses and chariots. And so powerful armies forming together an alliance and a great horde, a huge number of these nations coming together, and they have a lot of troops, and they have a lot of men to where it's the sand of the seashore. We remember the sand of the seashore when God calls Abraham to build the nation of Israel, and he has him go outside and he says, look up, you see the stars in the sky, you see all the sand in the seashore, that is how you are gonna be the father of many nations. And so that's using picture language in the Old Testament to help them understand what God is communicating. And here this picture tells us the sand and the seashore of how many men and how big the alliances are that have formed against the nation of Israel. That when you just look at the numbers, it would make no sense that the nation of Israel is going to win these battles and these conquests because they're way, way outnumbered. But why do they win? It's not because of the nation of Israel. It's not because of their might. It's because of Yahweh, their Lord, is doing the fighting for them. I love Exodus 14, 14, that when Moses is getting ready to cross the Red Sea and the people are afraid because Pharaoh has changed his mind and his heart and those Egyptian chariots are coming after them, that God tells them, don't be afraid. Today, the Lord is going to fight the battle for you. The Lord is fighting for you. And that's what Israel realizes. God is doing the fighting because when it comes to just looking at things from a worldly perspective, they're way outnumbered, they're way outmanned, and they don't have these powerful chariots and all of these horses like these foreign armies. And yet they are getting victory after victory because Yahweh is on the move and he's doing the fighting for them. And Joshua is being strong and courageous leading this army in this conquest even though they are way outnumbered. He is a man of faith. And we saw that early on. Remember when Moses would send out the spies to spy on the promised land and 10 were bad and two were good in the book of Numbers. And the two that were good were Joshua and Caleb because they have strong faith in the Lord when the other 10 didn't. And they said, there's giants in the land. We're just like grasshoppers to them. And so Joshua, a man of strength and courage, faithfulness and he is leading the charge even though he's outnumbered and Yahweh is bringing the victory. We see what happens here in verse 5. And all these kings joined their forces and came and encamped together at the waters of Miram to fight against Israel. And so Miram has these copious springs and it's a beautiful rendezvous point, a meeting point for troops to gather and for kings to gather. And so that's what's happening here as they gather together, forming their alliance, going over to their game plan, knowing Israel's coming their way, that they've already attacked the southern part of Canaan, and now they're coming up to them in the north to make sure that they're all on the same page to fight these battles. They're gathered at these beautiful springs at this rendezvous point, coming together to go over the plan. And the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid of them. For tomorrow, at this time, I will give over all of them slain to Israel. And so the same promise. Joshua, remember what I told you early on before we started the conquest, that I'm calling you to be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And to be successful, be strong and courageous and follow the words of the Lord, knowing that I'm with you and that I'm going to give you victory. And he says, tomorrow at the same time, Joshua, you don't have to be afraid. Do not fear. I'm going to give you victory. What's it say in the Bible over 360 times? Do not be afraid. I think God realizes our human tendency is to become fearful. And what does fear do? It is a powerful motivator. Fear paralyzes our mind and paralyzes our bodies when we are in fear. We're not using our full brain less than half, half of it when we're scared and when we're afraid. And so over and over, God tells us and he tells his people in his word, do not be afraid, do not be terrified, for I'm with you wherever you go. 
That's why we as Christians talk about faith over fear. And that's what we see being lived out here with Joshua and the army of Israel that is moving north for the conquest. Look what he says. He says, you shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. How are they going to hamstring the horses and burn the chariots of fire? To hamstring the horses means that they're going to make a cut on that tendon on the back legs of those horses. So those horses are unable to perform up to their capabilities. And so that's what's going to happen here. And so it is a technique of warfare back in this time period in this age. And that's what God says to him. Verse 7, So Joshua and all his warriors came suddenly against them by the waters of Miram, these springs, this rendezvous point. And they surprise attack them. They come suddenly upon them. And the Lord gave them into the hand of Israel, who struck them and chased them as far as great Sidon and Misrophoth Maim, and eastward as far as the valley of Mitzpah. And they struck them until he left none remaining. And so Joshua was following the commands of the Lord. This total destruction, annihilation, don't leave anything, was commanded in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1 through 5. And so Joshua was being strong and courageous. He's not being fearful. And he's following the Lord's commands, doing what the Lord has commanded, so that the nation of Israel are not falsely influenced by these cultures and this idol worship and the incredible and horrendous worship of these false gods and idols of these foreign nations, of these Canaanites, which was a fertility cult and was just evil in all of its practices and wicked. And so God is saying, we're going to destroy evil. And so Joshua was following those commands. And Joshua did to them just as the Lord said to him. He's following the word of the Lord. And as he follows the word of the Lord, he hamstrung their horses and burned their chariots with fire, doing exactly what God told him to do. And Joshua turned back at that time and captured Hazar and struck its king with the sword. For Hazar formerly was the head of all of those kingdoms, the head of the alliance, and all these kings and nations coming together was the king of Hazar. And they struck with the sword all who were in it, devoting them to destruction. There was none left that breathed, and he burned Hazar with fire, following what God told them to do in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, when it comes to the conquest of destroying everything so that they're not culturally influenced. And why did God pick Israel in the first place? Just a couple of verses later in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7. God picked them because they were the smallest nation in number and because God chose them and set his affection on them because they were so small. And what's he building here? They're going to become the most powerful kingdom in all of the world, eventually under King David and King Solomon. And so that the whole world would know that the true God is the God of Israel. It's Yahweh because he can take the smallest nation with the least amount of power and because of his mighty power, the world will take note that God has to be behind this because they could never do it on their own. And it reminds us of what God has called us to be a part of his kingdom, that we didn't choose him, he chose us. He set his affection on us and he has called us by the power of the Holy Spirit through his word and through his sacraments, through the washing waters of holy baptism. You and I, we've been redeemed, we've been born again, and the Holy Spirit has come into our heart, our sins have been forgiven, and that we have been saved for a purpose, to be that light in this dark world, to glorify Jesus and his kingdom, because only his kingdom lasts forever. And so we remember today why God chose Israel and why he chooses you and I, because we are the new Israel. We are the church. What's it say in the New Testament? There is no more Jew, Greek, or Gentile. We are all sons and daughters of Father Abraham, and we are children of God, and we are his church, created on purpose to carry out his mission, his kingdom that lasts forever. And so we want to be like Joshua, strong and courageous, faithful to the word of God, knowing the promise of God, 
that he's with us wherever we go. We bow our heads to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for the gift of your word and we're thankful for the example of the faithfulness and the trust that Joshua has in you, Lord. And we're thankful that we get to learn from his leadership. And the same calling you had for Joshua is the same calling you have for us to be strong and courageous, to choose faith over fear, to trust in you and to trust in your word, to follow your commands because it's a better way to live because you're the great creator and designer and knowing that you are a promise keeping Lord, that you always keep your promises and that they are all fulfilled in Jesus, our savior. And your promise to us this day, Lord, is that you will be with us wherever we go. Lord, continue to give us strength and courage to dare to be different, to live in this world, going against the grain, against the culture, and instead being set apart by you, following you and your word. Continue to bless your church so that it can fulfill your mission and vision of why you established it, to build believers, to reach out and connect people to you, the only one who saves. The only name we find salvation is in the powerful name of Jesus and in him alone. We ask this in his name for you to bless us this day to be a blessing to others. In the name of Jesus, amen. Friends in Christ, have a blessed Thursday as we follow the Lord.